Hey guys, Daniel Burnett, owner of Train Like a Ranger and certified strength and conditioning specialist. Today I wanted to start a series known as Weekly Trainer Talks. This is where I get in front of the camera and I ramble about important training concepts. So this is the first installment of this series and I wanted to lay a foundation that I think is very important for, um, for other videos and concepts coming up and that is muscle fibers. So have you ever wondered why you don't typically see small guys competing in things like a powerlifting meet and why you don't see huge guys competing in things like a marathon run? There's probably a reason for that and it has to do with muscle fibers. So how you train targets specific muscle fibers and with these muscle fibers, form meets function. I'll explain more. So let's take any muscle in the body, but let's say the bicep and we were to dissect it in half and look at the anatomy inside. What you'll see with muscles is that they are bundles within bundles. The biggest bundles are fascicles, within fascicles are muscle fibers. There's two major categories of muscle fibers. There's type one and type two. Type one are aerobic in nature, meaning that you can take in oxygen and supply oxygen as energy needs to these muscle fibers. This is generally defined as things like activities you can do longer than two minutes in a sitting. Um, things like uh, cycling, swimming, jogging. These are these muscle fibers are the smallest in appearance and what they can do is low intensity contractions for long durations of time. So again, it goes back to form meets function. Looking at type two fibers, these guys start getting bigger. And these guys are anaerobic in nature, meaning that they use a different energy system to provide energy needs to them. What it is is the lactic acid system. And the byproduct of that is lactic acid. You probably heard of lactic acid before. Whenever you do activities that are anaerobic and use type two fibers, they provide, you know, lactic acid as a byproduct. This is the stuff that makes you fatigue and get sore. So there's two categories in, uh, in type 2 fibers. There's type 2 A fibers and there's type 2 B fibers, also known as type 2 X fibers. Um, type 2 A fibers are your medium-sized fibers. They, uh, they are more powerful and they, they can go for decent durations of time. We typically define type 2 fibers as, uh, as anaerobic and anaerobic again occurring without oxygen and meaning that these are activities that you're probably going to do for less than two minutes in a sitting and so with type 2a fibers these are kind of like your medium fibers they kind of play this muscular endurance role where you can go for longer durations but not unlike you know type 1 fibers you can't take in oxygen and keep going you're going to eventually hit your lactic acid threshold you're going to fatigue um and then whenever we're looking at type 2 B fibers, these are just for raw strength and power. These are your biggest muscle fiber. They are, they are strong, they are very powerful, but they fatigue very quickly. Well, how you train will determine which muscle fiber is targeted. So if you're training aerobically, you're going to target aerobic muscle fibers. Now, as the intensity goes up, the muscle fiber needs going to go up as well. So that's going to change the recruitment. So whenever you start doing things that are higher in intensity, your body may switch to type 2 A fibers. And then as things like you get to those raw power and, uh, and strength needs, they're going to pull in those type 2 B fibers. So how you train will determine what muscle fibers are getting recruited. And these muscle fibers are, again, for means function, so all of them can grow, but some of them are just naturally big. So whenever you got guys who are, you know, power lifters or strength, like strongman athletes, they're going to be building on those fibers that are already big and making those bigger and more improved. Whenever you take an endurance athlete, sure, those muscle fibers can grow as well, but they're already slender in appearance. So they can grow to a degree, but again, goes back to form meets function. How you train will determine how you look and how you perform. So this is why you typically don't see, you know, little guys competing in things like 
at powerlifting meet and why you don't see big guys competing in things like a marathon run because how they train determine their their uh the way that they appear and the way that they appear probably means that's the way that they perform so going back to you know a common question that i get is you know can you gain size while also gaining endurance and short answer is yes but you got to think of training as a tipping scale the more that you give to one side the more that you may lose on another so that's important to keep in mind people also wonder you know what is my composition if we got different muscle fibers in our body what is my composition so and there's some debate here but normal people it's about a 50 50 split type 1 fibers and type 2 fibers um there's other people who like i said this varies there's other people who may be given an 80 20 split maybe these guys are going to be your olympic power lifters and ultra marathon runners and that's not to say that people with you know these uh, quote unquote normal genetics can't achieve those things through training sure they can they can improve their existing muscle fibers and uh and eventually reach that goal but there's some people who are just naturally more gifted towards certain skills and there's people who have a hard time achieving other goals and this could be one of those factors at play so genetics is one uh, factor in composition the other is training so through training we can change our type 2 fibers so we can change type 2a to type 2b to fit those training needs or vice versa we can change our existing type 2b fibers to type 2a and there's debate on this as well but uh, most research points to you cannot change type 1 fibers to type 2 fibers and vice versa so basically your composition of type 1 and type 2 fibers are there to stay but you can improve existing muscle fibers and you can convert those uh, within type 2 fibers so that is that's an important concept in training um, it's also a consideration as a trainer you know I got to think of training needs you know what kind of goals do these guys have how do they want to look how do they want to perform and that will determine what kind of activities we do so for example if a guy wants to get strong we're going to lift we're going to need to recruit those big muscle fibers we're going to need to lift big weight and uh, you know things that are going to fatigue those guys quickly if we're looking at type 2a fibers we're looking at things that we can do for longer durations but not forever you know this is things like uh, you know, if we're talking like a military prep concept, like the PT test, how many push-ups can you do in two minutes, right? Uh, time time frame sounds familiar there. So, you know, we look at we look at that. Eventually, you're going to fatigue on those push-ups, right? You can't do them forever. Can't take in oxygen and keep going. So, you know, that's something you can do is more muscular endurance type activities. Um, and then type one fibers. If we're looking at improving those, we're going to look at those. Um, swimming jogging cycling things like that so uh so hopefully that clarifies some some confusion on why uh certain athletes look a certain way and and perform a certain way thanks for tuning in guys be sure to check out trainlikearanger.com for all your training and nutrition needs we have workout programs we have nutrition programs we have merchandise and educational content and much more uh, on the agenda so be sure to check us out Remember to train to your utmost potential like a ranger.